Welcome to the shooting show. This week we bring you a difficult decoying session with pigeon guru Jeff Garrett and Ely Hawk's finest Thomas Atienza behind the big guns. Plus we bring you all the latest and the best from the CLA 2013 Game Fair at Ragley Hall. Jeff Garrett is taking care of the pigeon population once more, and this time Ely's finest, Thomas Atienza, has joined him. The only thing that didn't show up is some good weather. Well, what, what we're hoping to do today, Tom, is obviously shoot pigeons, obviously the main thing, <laughs> um, but at the moment we're in the best place because it's uh, weather conditions are not to our liking out there, really. I mean, you know, the rain, but... I have been assured by the BBC weathermen that this is going to blow through and we could be just have the odd scattered shower this afternoon. But we've just got as lot to say, just wait now and for it to ease up and then we'll go up there and uh, set the hide up. When it's raining like this, they just sit in the trees, you know, they, unless they're absolutely desperate to feed. I mean, no one likes getting about in rain, do we? Even we don't like being about, so pigeons are no different. Um, the one thing I've found with decoying, um, when it's wet, once the pigeon, de especially if you're using the, 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 a, a proper pigeon, um, once the feathers get wet and you start seeing bubbles of, of water laying, sitting on the tail, Believe me, pigeons will notice that. That'll, that'll put them off decor more than anything. You're like an open book. <laughs> <laughs> you have nothing in between. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but you know, I think I've learned more about pigeons and habits of the pigeons in well, ten minutes with you than a whole life shooting them. Well, it's just once, you, once you've been doing it as long as what I have, you know, I mean, my dad took me pigeon shooting. Um, you know, when I was like my young son, he's just turned 14, but I mean, I don't know everything about pigeon shit, you know, but I know enough to get by. Um, You're modest now, I think. Yeah, but you, 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 you learn things. Every time you go out, you learn something that new, you know. And believe me, I'm just beginning to look over my left shoulder and there's that bright clouds coming up. It's getting bright, eh? Yeah. yeah. A patch of blue sky means we can't waste any more time chatting. Jeff manoeuvres the pickup into his favoured spot where they'll be staking out their feathered furs. He's done this a hundred times, but newbie Thomas is as keen as can be to get dropping some woodies. First things first, the boys clear the ground to set up the shooting hide. With a job to do, suddenly Jeff's not so talkative. But this is a race against time, and you don't want to be caught in a damn paw before you've got the hide up. Thomas is eager to get started, and with all things about in place, he goes to grab his gun and ammo. I'll be shooting my Cesarini trap gun, which might not be the uh, perfect gun for the job, but as Jeff said, I feel comfortable with it, so I hope I get some good results. One Garini, ready to go. Hope for the best. Is that going where I think it's going? Yep. <laughs> It's where the sun don't shine. <laughs> Have the jacks it. After that introduction to decoying, Jeff lets Thomas have a go himself, and he certainly gets an A for effort. <laughs> I wouldn't <laughs> film that. It's just, it's just come out of the sign. Well, that's it. That'll do lovely. And just last minute, just pull the wings out like that, okay. spread them out, get a bit of movement. I mean, the good thing about these kind, what I like about them, is because you can sit the pigeons, you know, like here. You know, any pigeon coming within 50, 60 metres of us will see these, you know, and hopefully that should bring them in. Boy short. Extreme. 
is going to shoot fives, isn't it? It's not going down to six and a half. No, 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 no. I've just, these are just <laughs> ones I've got in my pocket. With the shop set up, it's time for Thomas to bag his first customer of the day. Yeah, what's that one doing? Look. See him? Go, go, go. Ooh. It's one shot and one miss for each of them, but luckily the birds aren't shy and there are plenty of opportunities for the duo to improve their record. Another pigeon escapes Jeff's gun, and it's an anxious moment early on for the team, but some nerves are inevitable before you connect with that first bird. We're not giving up yet. A bit slow. Yeah, come up the hedge, look, up the hedge, look. Yeah, yeah, up the hedge. Come over the top. Well done. Well done. That's the duck broken, and another pigeon soon joins the first on the ground. Jeff is straight out to turn the fallen woodies Come into in. fresh decoys, hopefully to bring in even more of their winged brethren. Jeff turns decoying into an art form, giving this bird some special treatment. Here, come on, come on, here. Set up complete, we fall right back into the action. Go, go. Shot. Well done. Stoked up with Ely cartridges, the Garini seems to be doing its job. Before they know it, Jeff and Thomas have a chance to get two birds for the price of one. Yeah, come on, have the decoys, have the decoys, Here, have the decoys. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, too late, sorry. Go on. Sorry, I didn't think there was one just swing right. And the decoy. So I didn't realise that one was coming in. It come, it, one back, look, one back. Okay. Missed it the first one. With another bird down, Thomas gives us the half-time team talk. Yeah, it's something I enjoy, and uh, being good company with Jeff, you can you can't knock it, can you? It's a bit unfortunate. The weather is not helping a lot. It's getting a bit better. Um, I think we got about what 15 altogether. Yeah, about so that, yeah. Uh, so it's not bad. Um, a bit early. It's only three o'clock. We've got plenty more time to go. So fingers crossed. I'll let you know at the end of the day. Your European time still. Am I? <laughs> no. Oh yes, I am. It's two o'clock. <laughs> I just come back from Madrid. That's the excuse. Shot. Yeah, to your left. To your left. To your left. Oh, I think you got him. Yeah, he come down behind the hedge. Another shot and another decoy added to the pattern. We're really getting into the swing of things now. Get down. Um, we are getting, we are beginning to shoot a few. Um, there's more pigeons on the move. They've been a little bit slow. I mean, we've, we've been in and out of rain showers every half hour. We're having a heavy rain shower, which is not helping matters. Um, but I do expect it to pick up a little bit as the, as the day goes on. We've got the wings set. It's try and come up nice and steady, you know, then swing onto the bird. Just, just, just saves a bit of, because it, it's, you know, it saves a bit of that jumpiness. Hopefully the pigeons are, yeah, I'll let some come in here, look where they go. Well done. Good night, Jeff. Fun? <laughs> yeah. Good boy. Good boy.
Yeah, there's a couple of flight lines. Uh, there's one that goes over, unfortunately for us, it's, it's coming over the motorway and it's sliding down the pylons and it's going way wider us down there, which we can't do nothing about. But there is one that's, that's coming up through here, which is hopefully what I've just tried to do there, um, is to try and draw it in now by putting these pigeons, these flappers down that end of the, um, the decoy pattern. Just try and hopefully, instead of going over the hedge there, I'll see them and just we'll just draw them in here a bit more. Um, but we're doing all right, but it is, it's very slow again today. The weather may be drawing in, but we're still getting plenty of action as Thomas's two barrels and Jeff's three shot facility are put to full use. The bird count is rising, and we're doing good work to conserve the crops in the area. on in front of me quad bite, that's my vermin gun. You know yeah. what I take around with me when I'm checking my traps and that. But I always like the Beretta for, auto, for automatics. They're very simple, but they just, just go on and on and on. Well done. Tell well me you got that one. With one final shot, we draw to a close, a day of tough but rewarding pigeon shooting. Then we need to come back and do it better. <laughs> hint, hint. <laughs> right, that's it for another day. Uh, just picked up. I think we've got 61 in the bag. Uh, it's been very hard today. Um, dodging the showers for one thing. We've had five or six really heavy showers, which has, uh, hasn't helped matters. Um, Pigeons have been very hard to decoy today. We've had some good shooting. Thomas has shot some good shots today. Um, we've killed some good birds, missed some good birds. Um, you know, it's been a good day, but it's been very hard. But that's just pigeon shooting. You can't get it right all the time when you expect a big bag, you know. But the main thing is we've had a good bit of fun. Um, kept a few pigeons off the rape field. Hopefully keep the farmer happy. Jeff and Thomas there finally getting to grips with the wood pigeons. And now the shooting show news with an extended report from the CLA Game Fair 2013. This is the shooting show news. The Countryside Alliance has launched its Shot for the Pot campaign, a fundraiser designed to encourage more people to eat wild game and locally sourced British produce. Members are invited to sign up to host a Shot for the Pot event between the 27th of October and the 3rd of November. As part of its Game to Eat campaign, the CA asks that guests are charged £10 each to be donated to the charity to support its work in promoting the value of naturally sourced wild British food. Find out more in Modern Gamekeeping magazine. Ruag Amotec has made a multi-million euro investment in new technology and expanding production capacity. The UK distributor of RWS, Gecko and Parazzi and importer of Anschutz Rifles and Carly's Optics will implement a three-year investment programme to increase its operational capacity in Germany, Switzerland, Sweden, Hungary and the USA. CEO Cyril Kabelka said it is the only way to be able to meet the high international demand even better in future. George Digweed has achieved his 21st World Championship title at the World Fitter Sporting Championship in Spain. If this wasn't enough to convince you of his shooting credentials, he also recently shot 100 straight in two different competitions in one day. This weekend's CLA Game Fair, held at Ragley Hall, Warwickshire, was a scorcher on all fronts. The sun shone on the estimated 140,000 visitors who were able to enjoy the best of all the countryside has to offer. As always, the great and the good of the shooting world were spotted at the show. Oh, 
Austrian rifle maker Strasser had a large presence at the show on Sportsman Gun Centre's stand. SGC's Ryan Hellier was on hand to talk us through a new straight pull rifle for the UK market. Hi, my name is Ryan, I'm from Sportsman's Gun Centre. We're at CLA 2013 at Ragley Hall. And I'm here today to show you the new Strasa RS05 straight pull rifle. We as a company, the Sportsman's Gun Centre, have just become the main agents and UK distributors for the firm. They are a company that have been running for us a little while. They make phenomenal rifles, which we are very proud to now be the distributors for. The rifle itself is a straight pull system, which is like this as so. They come in various different models. You can have them as a wooden stock or as a synthetic. There's many features that uh, the stars are offer, which is quite unique compared to most straight pull rifles. When you cock the action and remove the bolt, you have a pin on the top of the forend. Push the pin in, which releases an Allen key. The Allen key can then be used to take the forend off. The forend removes like so. The same Allen key is then used and a hydraulic system which holds the barrel in place. The rifles um, have an interchangeable barrel, so as you use the pin that we've used to remove the forend, you can then remove the barrel, like so. The barrels are interchangeable with different calibers, and you have a unique feature on the bolt head. The bolt head itself has a little catch, which you can then simply remove the bolt head. And with each calibre that you use, you can replace a new bolt head, and then changing the calibre of the rifle. The rifle is a magazine fed, you come a standard with a 3 plus 1 shot and you can have high capacity 6 plus 1 for the driven bore shooting. The rifle itself also offers another feature. The trigger unit itself can be removed and you have three different settings on the trigger unit. The trigger unit then offers a heavy to a light to a medium trigger pull, offering you the advantage of being able to place the trigger in three different settings between heavy, medium and light. The Strasa also offers a unique mounting system which is available as a railed version, a Picatinny version or a 30mm mounting system. It's a quick release system which is removed like so, which means it enables the shooter there to hold zero when he remounts the scope. Prices on the Strasa start from £2,295 for the basic model. The CLA saw continued support from industry giants such as Swarovski, who were showcasing their premium brand EL range binocular. Okay, these are our um, EL range finders. Uh, this particular one is the 1042. The range finders have been out now for 12 months. Um, they've been a great success for the company. The uh, design has been based on our original ELs, so you've got this ergonomic design, so they're really comfortable to hold. Um, we do two, we do an 8 and a 10 times 42 um, it works very simply, you have a button on the top here, which you press, it will give you a target, you release the button and it will give you a reading. Um, the rangefinder will work from 30 metres up to 1600 metres, so it's very accurate, it's accurate to 1 metre plus or minus, so if you're out in the field stalking, you can take a reading and be sure that you're going to take a safe shot. Optically, they are fantastic. They're really bright, the clarity, the contrast is amazing. So, for low light observation, they're a perfect tool to work with your, your rifle scope. Browning International welcomed several new shotguns to its arsenal. So, we have here the new Browning 75 Sporter Black Edition. Uh, it's a brand new product in our range, uh, launched in uh, July of 2013. Uh, it's based on the standard Browning 75 that's already in existence. However, we now have a plain black action with the gold detail and uh, married to a grade 5 walnut uh, with a palm swell specifically for the, uh, the sporting gun. The black edition also features the new Vector Pro forcing cones and the DS choke system which we've now devised for the 75. These features reduce the overall weight of the gun to previous models and also the centre of gravity has been moved back by about 14 millimetres so we now find the gun is far better balanced than previous models. The DS choking system is also a far cleaner system meaning the, uh, the choke is sealed at the muzzle end and at the other end of the choke about 80 millimetres back by a gas seal, copper gas seal so it's a very clean gun to shoot as well. Retail price around 2499 and available in all good gun shops now. Steve Hornady spent some of the weekend on the Edgar Brothers stand, introducing new reloading equipment and the GMX centerfire bullet. 
We have a lot of interest in our new GMX bullets. That's a, a non-lead gilding metal bullet, and so there's a lot more growing interest in that from both hunters as well as uh, target shooters and reloaders just because they see an increase in demand for the non-lead. Gilding metal is an alloy of copper and zinc, and it's superior to pure, pure copper because pure copper is very soft, and so when you shoot it out of a rifle particularly, it tends to foul the, bar the barrel very, very badly. Gilding metal, because it's the same alloy that we use in our normal jacketed bullets, it doesn't foul the barrel, and so it's, it's a lot easier for the shooter and you don't have to worry about trying to clean your barrel as much. Members of the Night Force team were on the Sportsman Gun Center stand, explaining the features of the company's new line of scopes. Uh, what I have here is the new Night Force Beast Rifle Scope. It's a 5 to 25 by 56 magnification model. Uh, and this model was designed specifically to meet certain military requirements. So uh, what we're hoping is certainly that it'll carry over to the commercial market and for what the end user wants here, certainly when it comes to stalking or long range shooting. Our adjustment mechanism is a hybrid mechanism where you essentially have a major and then you have a minor adjustment. And for mil radian models, what it allows is we get 20, min or 20 mil radian of travel in one revolution or 60 minutes of travel in one revolution. So you have two tenths of a mil radian or a half minute and then you have a minor adjustment that will give you a tenth mil radian or a quarter of a minute. It has a braking mechanism on top by simply rotating it into place. As we see we've added some elevation and it popped up. So that locks it in place so it's not moving. Push it down and rotate it and it turns off you can still spin freely. Another braking mechanism on the windage. It's a zero lock if you will. You can spin it freely once it's off zero and snaps back in place. And then of course new for 2013 is the Digiloom feature. The Digiloom, what it has is multiple intensity settings. It's digital illumination where it allows you to have change between colors of red and green. And the other thing that it does too is it has an auto, a memory. So it remembers where it was the last time you had it on and it'll shut off automatically after 60 minutes so you don't deplete your battery. Like all Night Force optics, we individually inspect everything that we sell. And so basically, we've already done more to the scope than you will. We managed to corner the Poshenbecks of the UK shooting scene, Tanya and Richard Folds, who told us all about their continued success in competition clay shooting and what they liked about their chosen guns. So Richard, you um, moved to a new gun in February this year, uh, from Bretta to Cesar Carini. How's your move uh, been? Because you had some success very early on at the uh, World English Sporting Clays Championship. Yeah, it's been absolutely great. Um, and Cesar Guarini and Mike and all his team at Anglo Italian are absolutely fantastic to work with. Uh, we've come out with a new model straight away and uh, it's going really, really well. The gun's ever so um, easy to shoot. There's no recoil at all. Um, it's balanced very well. You know, it's a great looking gun, as you can see. And just, it's, it's all going absolutely perfectly to plan. Okay, and from a technical point of view, perhaps we could talk through some of the, the technical points you like about the gun. What, what length barrel are you, are you shooting now? 32 inch barrel, yep. um, as, as I have done for a long time now. But the balance of this gun is, is really, really central. Um, it's about eight and a bit pounds, yep. multi-choke, um, customised stock, but to be honest, it's not far off of what a factory stock left-handed would be anyway. Mm -hmm. um, and just, yeah, it's all absolutely perfect. And um, when you move from one make of gun to another, uh, a, lot, a lot of people will find that they need to make changes in technique because of the different inherent handling characteristics. Did you find you needed to make any changes to your technique when you switched? Not at all, no. I mean, I, I literally I picked it up on the Saturday at the British Shooting Show, um, shot an event on a Sunday, shot a 93 or 94, I can't remember. Following weekend, shot a 99. The following weekend after that, shot a 99. So, you know, if anything, my shooting has gone up. My percent average has gone up about four and a half, five percent since I've used this new gun. So it's, you know, I've, I've had personally absolutely um, nothing to change in my technique for this new gun at all. And um, although you've had historically a tremendous amount of success in double trap, I'm sure you were delighted to win the World English Sporting for the fifth time this year. What are your plans for 2014? Uh, really, again, just to continue with the sporting, the fit ass, compact, um, to do a lot more international stuff, sporting orientated stuff, um, which up until the last kind of six months we haven't really been able to do because we've been tied up in the Olympics 
you know, the last best part of 20 years. So really looking forward to just getting on the scene with this new gun and, and really making a mark with it. I, I hear your wife Tanya is uh, now shooting a side by side rather well, a fab arm. <laughs> and, uh, is she giving you lessons or are you giving her lessons? She absolutely thrashed me with it a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> um, yeah, she shot brilliantly and won the European Championship for ladies side by side with it. Um, and you know, her shooting this year has really shone through. She's made the England team for the World English Sporting Hat for the Home International. Um, yeah, she's shooting a green as well, shooting it really well. So life's good. Yeah, and uh, are you shooting a greenie or fab arm for game shooting at all, or, uh, or not? It'll be the same gun. Yeah, same gun. Yeah. Now the gun you're shooting, Richard, is a Caesar Greeny Ellipse Evo RF1. Uh, what kind of uh, money would that cost if uh, somebody wanted to go to their local shop and buy one? They're four thousand nine hundred ninety-five pounds, which I think, for the quality of the build of the gun, um, the style of it, the look of it, and the way it handles, I think, represents excellent value for money. Tony, you uh, moved to Caesar Guarini back in February, the same time as Richard yep. did. Um, how have you found that switching to a Guarini has uh, improved your shooting? Oh, it's been absolutely phenomenal. I just personal best that I've done, then I've beaten the next personal best. Um, picked up a few medals along the way, and I've made the England team um, a couple of times this year. So. For yep. the first time. Excellent. So you're shooting in Canada, I understand, next week, and you'll be yes. shooting the Home International in September. How do you think you're going to cope with the nerves? Nerves? I've been shooting for a little while anyway, but um, nerves just don't, they don't really come into it. I think I've got a really good coach for that. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, nerves, hopefully they won't interrupt. I'll just go out there and enjoy. Okay. Now, although um, the gun behind us is your Caesar Guarini Summit that you mm -hmm. use for your competition shooting, I notice you're carrying the fab arm. Which, which yep. fab arm is that? It's a classic. A classic Cam. side to side. Um, and I used this actual one uh, about two weeks ago for the European side to side and uh, won the ladies gold then. And um, beat Richard. <laughs> he did mention he uh, absolutely thrashed you earlier. So when you go game shooting in, in season, what will you be using? Will you be uh, shooting the side by side or the over and under? Um, I may take that on the odd occasion, but I will be using the over and under. So the Fab Arm Classic you've got there, it looks very much to me like it's engineered as um, a side-by-side -side for over and under shooters. What is it you like about shooting it? What I love about it is the pistol grip, because it's just exactly the same as my Summit, as well as the trigger. Single trigger is really great, and it's got a nice chunky fore-end, and there's just absolutely no recall, which is brilliant for women that always sometimes they've been frightened away of shooting side to side because of the kick that they get and burning their fingers and things like that. Um, but it's absolutely great, there's no kick to it whatsoever. I just, I just shot it as it is basically, a little bit of a comb I put on there and I went away with it. So, so Tanya, if somebody wanted to buy one of the Fab Arm Classics and shoot it at a game this season, what kind of money would they be into? And the Classic, they're going for 2175 which I think is brilliant. They can have a bit of a shop around and etc, but you get a lot of gun for a small price. Staying with clay shooting, Olympic shooting hero Peter Wilson was at the show, giving a shooting masterclass and promoting his new e-game book. Perfect. Same again? Be all right. Hold on. <laughs> the 10th final saw Paul Wilkinson walk away the 2013 CPSA Champion of Champions, with Ollie Baker coming in second and Paul Leverk in third. As well as prize money, Pete won the use of a Land Rover 405 for one month, courtesy of Land Rover. The first place with the 37. Give him a big hand, ladies and gentlemen. Very proud. Yeah, very, very good. There was a lot of good shooters and it would qualify, so to win, I was very good. Shot okay. I was a little bit nervous for it. I don't do nerves as a rule because I've won a few things in the time, but I felt a bit nervous whether there's so many people watching. I missed a few early ones, uh, uh, which was a bit silly, but once I got the ground, it was 37 years old. Okay. Shot four times for England, uh, twice for the World Five Man. Uh, England team. I've won the British Open all round in 2010. Uh, but uh, yeah, I enjoyed this one. Yeah, it's nice. I'm sponsored, fully sponsored by Caesar Guarini, Italian gun makers. Uh, give me anything I want, which is fantastic. I'm also uh, fully sponsored with uh, Hall Cartridge Company as well, and they look after me great and give me any cartridges I want.
And finally, the Baskin Sporting Rifle Measuring Service attracted unprecedented support from the stalking public. Hi Paul, man of many talents. I see you're measuring today for the BASC Sporting Rifle Measuring Service. Yeah, um, it's been, been a great weekend so far. We've uh, we had 40 odd heads yesterday. Um, six really good gold robots, um, two large platinum, one with an absolute cracking butt. Yeah, really good, beautiful pernings, and uh, yeah, lovely, lovely one to shoot myself, that would be. Excellent, and it's uh, it's not quite 12 o'clock yet on uh, day two, so a day and a half in. Yeah. Uh, how many heads have you measured? Um, today we're on about, like, about 18 to 20 at the moment, um, but they seem to be more sporadic today. Heads are coming through. But it's um, early yet? It is, yeah, and people are still coming in. And yesterday? Um, 40 odd yesterday, yeah. Oh, yeah, perfect. Yeah, yeah, very busy. Lots of row heads. Um, we had um, a interesting uh, wild boar. Um, yeah, so it's, it's good. It's a new situation. Perfect. And c could you tell our viewers uh, anything about the bass measuring service? Yeah, I mean, the, the service is, is great. It's going in full swing now. Um, it's very busy. It's, it's, a, it's a credible um, system and um, it's being used by a lot more people now. It's a great system. Well, that's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.